Alrighty, welcome to part four. We're going to be uh, actually painting some dudes. I know we've been doing a lot with the base, but uh, the base is still pretty cool. But we're going to do uh, actual, real, bolt action figure painting today. Uh, you'll notice that I did paint the guy's helmets uh, green. Uh, I have been using a uh, it's a local color. So you know, poly, sorry, poly scale. You can use whatever green, but uh, basically it was a real basic all grab. The reason I did that was because uh, I was testing out some greens to uh, see what I liked. Uh, this green came out pretty good. This is actually listed as uh, like a British Army brown. Go figure. My wife watched my video the other day, and she said that I put stuff way too close to the camera. So I'm going to take that feedback and run with it. Anyway, so I'll try not to get too close to the camera from now on. There's nothing like a wife to give you firm and uh, rendingly honest feedback on your YouTube video. Anyway, colors I'm going to use, and you don't necessarily have to use these colors. These are just uh, colors that I found are pretty good. For the, uh, for the tunic, I'm going to use a cheap paint which is fine. I know I said not to use them on the figures if we could help it, but this color is fantastic. It's called Basil Green. It's by Folk Art. Uh, I think it's about as close to the, uh, the like a faded uh, army jacket from World War II as you can get. For the, uh, for the pants, classic Citadel colors, B Seal Brown. For the boots, coffee bean, another acrylic color. It's really not that much to uh, to paint with that one. Some of the uh, webbing, we're going to be looking at uh, Country Twill and linen. Lastly, probably my favorite uh, metallic color in the range. Bolt gun metal from Citadel. One of this is probably the, one of the best uh, realistic metallic colors you can paint with. Uh, it's not too silvery. It's not too tinny. It's pretty nice. So, uh, like I said, those are those are representative colors. You can pretty much paint with whatever you feel good about. Uh, if you can't find basil green, which I know that uh, folk art seems to take great delight in discontinuing colors seemingly at will. Then uh, pretty much any any of the military colors, like Army Painter puts out some really good stuff in addition to uh, uh, Viejo obviously puts out good stuff. And these are uh, these are great colors. So Without further ado, uh, don't panic if you get too much on the web belts. This stuff is going to go on uh, very dark. Uh, you do want to do a little bit of dry brushing if you can. To leave some shadowy shades. Especially in the... Uh... There we go. Crevasses of the uniform here. My first run, I like to leave a lot of. I like to leave as much black as I can, because I can use that as an emphasis color. So, don't really need to go too deep on that one. I will overcoat all the suspenders and accoutrements on this guy's coat because I can always go back and repaint that stuff. Matter of fact I will end up going back and repaint it. Get all the way up into the collar. I know you're kind of looking at this upside down so sorry about that. Just uh, get a nice relatively good coverage. Don't Don't feel too bad if you get up into the sleeves too much. The flesh color will cover that up, but it's better to do that now 
than it is to try and uh, backscale it with the uh, the flesh color. Like I said, just leaving a little bit of a little bit more black than I probably would care to under normal circumstances. If this were uh, painting a model, obviously you wouldn't want to leave that much black. But the the fact is, you can either paint a miniature to look good on the miniature table or look good up close and uh, I tend to try and get an exaggerated paint scheme so that they tend to look good on the gaming table all right one down like I said we're gonna end up uh, repainting a lot of this so don't panic even if you go across the belt here all right and the pants are obviously going to be a much darker color. So this is more approximate to what I was looking for there. All right. And uh, you may not obviously this is a this is a little thinner paint than uh, the Viejo range or even the Citadel range. So uh, you're going to need to put a couple coats on this stuff. So uh, try not to put it on too thick, and uh, try not to wash out too much of the details with it. So it's really important you don't put it on thick. So you can definitely see some of the uh, the black shining through. All right, you're just gonna touch over the chest area. Sorry, the other guy needs some, needs some love. So just like that. Second coat's going to bring it out a little better. A little more into the crevices. A little more up by the neck. The uh, entire miniature, because of the amount of black you're going to have on the miniature, is going to going to look off a bit so until you add some of the uh, accent colors especially the flesh it's going to look a bit like a very dark miniature I like to try and add the flesh last if I can that way I can touch it up as needed and uh, again sorry I can't seem to keep the keep the uh, miniature in focus here. You could even paint the uh, the bags and the uh, the canteen if you want. It, it actually it does make a nice highlight color because it is pale. So anyway and up into the sleeves. I will once this thing's done. I'll oh, great. I will. Uh, I will take pictures so you can take a better look at it. So again, just a little bit of touch up into the crevasses, crevices, crevasses. Tomato, tomato. Okay. Let that dry a little and fast forward to the next part. Okay. Back again. I did start painting the uh, second miniature to speed things up. Uh, this is where you're going to add your uh, Bestial Brown from the uh, Citadel line. These uh, paint pots are a little nicer. You don't have to use the paint tray. This guy, uh, this little guy on the ground, is sitting down, which makes for super extra challenging. I don't know if you can see that or not. Alright. Don't be afraid to get any of this brown on the boots. Because uh, the darker brown is just going to cover that up and probably will blend pretty nice. Uh, the thing that the Americans were wearing in World War II was some leggings. And the leggings are pretty much the same color as the jacket sort of that worn 
semi olive drab uh, anyway so you're gonna have to paint that again with the same color you did the jacket just make sure you get enough brown into the uh, again nooks and crannies but don't be and just be careful of the brown on the base so you can afford to get a little brown on other parts of the trooper but not so much the bestial brown is a little thicker it's a little more forgiving because it is a dedicated miniature paint unlike the uh, acrylic craft paint I use periodically so you can uh, you can pour it into the joints a little bit you kind of see how I did the other guy Let me try putting a little more light on this I just realized things are a little dark there we go How's that? Better? So, anyway. So you got some brown on there. It will not be glossy when it dries. So, don't get too concerned. You push a little towards the knee, being very careful. Okay. So we've got uh, a couple shades of brown we got to work with here, and we'll make that happen. So the pants are done. Cool. We'll uh, move on to the next step, speeding right along. After basing, uh, this part actually is fairly easy. So uh, the detail paint is what's going to slow us down. Anyway, that's it for now. See you in a little while. Okay, next step, uh, boots. You might think that the boots are going to look a little weird because uh, I'm going to put the leggings on next. But uh, we're going to do our best. You don't have to paint the entire uh, foot up to the point. You can kind of see the stirrups around the leggings. The brown that I picked is a little, probably not quite as dark as I would have liked. But what I think is cool about it is it uh, it kind of looks like there's mud on the boots, and that's why I, uh, I kind of dig this brown. So you're not going to use very much of it at all. So. There we go. So, like I said, pretty much done. Not much brown. The uh, acrylics I use, sometimes the browns dry out. I don't know, some of the darker colors tend to dry out. So, you have to water them down a little bit, and that's what I had to do here. Just to get into the crevice spaces here. Okay. Just like I said, don't don't get a lot of paint on the base. If you do, if you really mess it up, what you can do is uh, flock the hell out of it or put some more uh, ground cover in there. I like to leave the bottom of the boots, since this guy is indeed kind of squatting, leave the bottom of the boots uh, black because that really wouldn't have gotten a very good uh, leather coating All right. and they would have worn off anyway so looks a little muddy grubby dirty we're good all right we're going to allow that to dry for just a moment and then uh, we're going to move it right along here. Got some green left over from when I did the uh, uniform coats. So we're going to paint the rest of the leggings. And that'll work. So let's move right into it. I'm not going to let that brown settle out too much. Uh, normally you would. It seemed to be on a time crunch. So uh, just uh, 
If it does look like it's sort of mixing, you just gotta slow down a little. Again, this the you're gonna leave a little bit of uh, a little bit of open black space on the side because that's where the uh, that's where the laces would have been. So don't go too crazy with overcoating the brown. Flip it around. We'll get the other side. There we go. Leave a little bit of a. Leave a little bit. And we'll leave a little bit. We'll kind of dry brush the side. There we go. Okay. One leg down. Again, we'll do the front. Dry brush it up. Not too much on the side. They do come down a little bit. I didn't notice that I left some uh, brown on the legging, so I'm going to have to get that. Myself to make sure I've actually got the miniature in the uh, in the photo here. Okay. All right. So you kind of we left the uh, little bit of the black on the side. You can kind of see it from this angle. So the guy on the ground here got to get his leggings in there, and that'll actually be some. Uh, definition there. Okay. I'm not going to be able to get a whole lot of his leggings in here because it's pretty tight. Again. Here we go. And there's his other set. Even some for the strings. A little bit there. And we got a little bit on this side. Here we go. Okay, so leggings and boots are complete. Take a little break, reset our paint a little bit. There we go. All right, so apparently I do not hit the record button on a camera. Uh, what I've done, apparent, and this will be one of those uh, speed painting things, is uh, I've added the Beige brown for the shovel. And this was uh, for beige. I use the country twill color. I also used it for the mortar crate, and I used the flesh paint, uh, very very light coating, dry coating, that I was able to leave a lot of the black lines in. You can kind of see that guy a little bit. There we go. Uh, like I said, there's one thing to it's one thing to paint to be uh, a scale model. It's another to be looking good on the tabletop. I'm going for tabletop, so uh, basically just dry brushed the uh, talon flesh over it to keep as much of the black line as I could. Talon flesh. I don't think uh, GW. I don't think GW or Citadel makes this stuff anymore, which is a real shame because this is probably one of the best. Uh, flesh bases I think that any model company's ever made so if you can get a hold of this stuff get a hold of it it's awesome for washes which is gonna happen in a while but not right now uh, I like to try and use uh, sepia first and build up the washes this is a good uh, lighter 
I mean, it's the lightest of the dark washes, and it's going to give your uh, give your military dudes kind of a worn-in look versus a uh, very contrasting black. And for the flesh wash, Formula P3 has this gnarly looking flesh wash, and I think it's got like acrylic parts in it. It's like an ink, and it's just that all that stuff is inside the actual bottle. It's not on the outside, but it's P3 flesh wash formula. This stuff works pretty good too. So we've got the uh, we've got the uh, faces painted. Notice there's a little bit of flesh on the helmets. Do not be afraid of that. Helmets are easy to repaint, and so uh, anyway, we'll be doing a little more touch up in a minute. So uh, see you in a minute. Okay, next part. The uh, we're going to be working with the uh, bolt gun metal. We actually uh, will be painting a, the actual mortar. The whole purpose of this crew stand. Uh, the other thing we're going to be painting is the mortar shell that's laying across the uh, box. As always, when you do metallic paints, we're going to be uh, switching brushes. Don't use the same brush that you use for like your base acrylics because it's not going to come out. The, uh, the metallic paint tends to stay in even after you wash it with water. So, uh, mortar shell going to get a very base coat of very basic coat of bolt gun you don't need to go crazy with it because you're going to have to repaint some of it anyway so that's just to give it a little color contrast so you can see the mortar shell on top of the box and of course what would a mortar team be without an actual painted mortar uh, it's a lot of dry brush so you be putting this on pretty uh, pretty sparse. You don't need to really go crazy with it. Uh, leave as many dark spots as you can on it. Especially around the base and the legs. Of course, it would be help if I actually had the uh, mortar within the camera sight here. All right. Like I said, you're not going too crazy with it. Just a, a dry brush of the black to give emphasis to the metal parts. Try not to leave any actual uh, bare metal stuff. If you can. The feet's fine. You're not going to see any of that crap anyway. The base plate should be uh, dry brushed pretty heavily. If you can. Just really give it a nice weathered worn look. And bulk gun's good for this weathered look stuff. Because uh, it doesn't come out too silver. It doesn't come out too perfect here. You use like uh, color like chain mail or something like that you're uh, you're definitely looking a little more a little more off the factory floor kind of stuff so uh, just a dry brushing on the base plate leave uh, as much black as you want on that but uh, definitely make it look kind of worn in as it were the base plate takes an incredible amount of abuse just because it's the heaviest part of the mortar and it's usually the first thing that the mortar guy drops once they're told to demount so it reserves itself a special place in the heart of all guys that have to transport mortar stuff uh, being the base plate guy I guess is like being the Joe boot camper because it is the heaviest part I know this for a fact because I had a friend that was a mortar guy. And he said carrying the base plate was like carrying a set of barbells in a backpack. It's interesting to note he was the smallest guy in his squad. So that seems to be a trend that survives to this day. Even then. I'll put it over a little a little a little more around the side. Give it a good coating. If we need to we can touch it back up. We're not going to glue the mortar down quite yet, just because we've got a little bit more uh, 
landscaping and flock to do. Anyway, but just make sure if you're going to use your brushes with metallic paints, make sure you do a really good job of uh, cleaning them out. Alright, next. Okay, for some of the suspender straps, there were huge color variations in uh, the equipment. So what I do is whatever colors I have left over in the palette, which I have some of the browns from uh, doing the boots, and I have some of the uh, green from the uniform, what I'll do is I'll just try and uh, mix those together. Try and uh, whip up a color that looks like one off from the actual uh, other colors I'm trying to like replicate. So, and this simulates like whether the guy had new suspenders or uh, old battle worn suspenders or whatever. If it looks like it starks out too much, if it contrasts too much, don't don't panic. We can go back to using the uh, go back to using the other paint. Just uh, and these can be variant from troop to troop too. So if if you don't quite get the right mix, I guess the uh, the term I would use is great because each trooper is going to be have a little different weathering than the trooper next to him. So uh, this is the one part where consistency doesn't pay off huge dividends. I'm going to keep mixing it off camera here so if I slow down it's because I'm pretty deeply concentrating. Again you can kind of use this for whatever you want. Ammo belts, etc. It kind of breaks up the monotony of the subject by giving you a little little different shade. The canteen covers were typically uh, green. The shovel covers are green so you can kind of use the same stuff you used on the helmets for that. Just uh, watch your uh, watch your color blending pretty good. The web belts were also green and keep in mind you've got a little bit of jacket underlap underneath the belt so what's going to happen is uh, you're going to have to get all this done and you're going to have to carefully stitch through with the uh, stitch through with the uniform green that you used earlier okay so we got some suspenders got some stuff going on already we'll, uh, we'll darken the green up a little bit more with the brown just to uh, not quite emphasize the suspenders as much. We're going to blend that in a little better. Okay. Make them look a little more brown. We've got a couple ammo pouches. We're going to do those in a different color. So it doesn't, uh, like I said, it doesn't wash out. We'll keep these little little pouches similar. Okay. This guy is clearly wearing some suspenders too. I'm just going to paint down the front here. Paint down the front. more belts. The brown on the pants is probably one of the more forgiving. Again, we'll cover up some more. Uh, we'll do a basic coat on the ammo carrier packs here. Alright, so we've got some suspenders going on. Again, you may not ever be able to replicate the paint, so you don't really uh, need to worry a lot about that. Sorry, freaking knuckles in the camera again. Okay. 
Okay, so we've added the old carrying straps in the back. We got some of the belt covered up. We could use a little more cover up on that too. Okay. Next, we're going to throw a little bit of a. Uh, we're going to throw a little bit more olive drab green, which is the hel is the color we use for the uh, the helmet. So uh, for that, we definitely want to hit the top of the shovel and maybe a few of the ammo pouches. Okay, we got a little bit of green. We don't need to use a lot. This isn't going to cover. We can also use touch up the helmets while we're here. The top of the canteen definitely is uh, like an olive drab green. Emphasize that a little more. You can make the whole canteen green if you want. Some of them are covered up completely with that. And definitely the shovel pouch. Just uh dry brush it a little bit. Leave a little more black. Make sure you get the top. And on the sides. And he's got his canteen as well. Probably going to paint his little canteen green. And I'm going to paint a few of these ammo pouches green. As a uh, limited color contrast. And a few of these front ones. Web belts were often green. They were that uh, same color green. So if you want to, you can uh, touch that up as well. And as promised, the tip of the mortar shell was also green. So we'll put a little a little bit of color contrast on that too. You can barely see that, but it's on there. Okay, we're really starting to see some uh, details pop on these guys. And uh, you may notice that I've already pre done the uh, commander a little bit. So, uh, to see what the family looks like here, mostly about 90% done with the uh, figure painting. That's what they look like. Coming along pretty nice, eh? Not a whole lot in this one. And, uh, it's been more effort to get the podcast running correctly and actually remember to uh, keep, the thing, uh, keep the thing going. So, with that. All right. Onward and upward. You're uh, you're this far into it now. You might as well finish it up. So uh, what we've got here is I've used a little bit of the sepia and I use a little bit of water. I won't show you a picture of that. I'm pretty sure you know what that is. And the secret ingredient for washes, all washes, is glue. I'll immerse. So you mix it up with some water. You uh, dilute the water and the glue first. 
and then you can add whatever ink you want. Okay. So uh, what I've done is I've gone with a little bit of the sepia. I want some sort of a brownish effect. And uh, the glue is basically to keep it from running out of the cracks. So uh, what we're doing now is we're going to basically uh, kind of put some of this uh, sepia glue water mix into the uniform. And you notice it's going to give it a... Uh, don't feel free to get some on its face too if you want. It's no big deal. But uh, it's going to give this a uh, kind of a brownish look. And we're going to run it on his back, around his collar, and definitely into the cracks and small parts of his uniform. Okay, and in and around. You should get kind of a, uh, a muddy effect, which is exactly what you want. Because let's face it, these guys are in combat. They're not sitting around waiting for things to happen. They certainly didn't have laundry every day. You can put some on the, the brown if you want. It doesn't really matter. You can coat the entire, uh, wherever you want, a little dose of brown. On the legs. Especially in the deep cracks. Uh, if you're going to do this, don't leave any bare spots. Like it's, a, uh, it's kind of an all or nothing affair. So, anyway. So yeah, you can't have like one sleeve clean and one sleeve dirty. So it's put a little bit on the face. Get the guy on the ground here. A little more water will let it seep a little better. We've got plenty. Okay, so we're gonna put it in the crack there. A little on the sleeve, and this simulates dirt pretty well. Uh, it also kind of darkens the uniform. And like I said, there was no was no standard for uh, olive drab in the field. It's whatever kind of looks good. You don't want to darken this up too much. You just want enough to pool up in the uh, crevices of the uniform. Uh, feel free to do around the belts because that's where it's gonna, it probably needs the uh, to darken the most. <coughs> Sorry. So definitely around the boots, helmet. Just make sure not uh, it's all been. Uh, just make sure all the sleeves have been covered. You will see it pull up around the sleeves a little more, but if you think about where dirt gathers up on a person, then uh, that'll work out just nice. A little more in the uh, side crack, as it were. One more here. You can build this up in multiple layers, so don't you don't have to go for go for baroque. You can just let it filter in. You already see it's starting to dry on the other guy. Well, it's already starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna wash a little more in there. A little more in the sleeves. A little more in a little more in his leggings. A little more on the shovel. Okay, that's the effect you get. Should look a little like this. It's gonna be very subtle. You notice it's just kind of like streaks of dirt. So if you don't quite get the deep enough uh, effect you want, then by all means add a little more. It looks good in or around the collar. Not that you want to give your dudes a uh, ring around the collar, but. Hey, whatever works. A little more around the leggings. Definitely around the uh, butt and crotch area. There you go. So that's already starting to dry. It's start to look like this. And it's going to break up that very uh, monotonous uh, sage green color that I already put on there. The nice thing about it is uh, it's also going to uh, keep from getting too shiny. If you use the sepia by itself without the glue, sometimes it gets a little weird shine on it. Uh, that's about it. I'm gonna let the thing about that though is uh, 
you, I know I've been jumping ahead with the painting. You really got to let that stuff dry. Uh, you want to give that a, like a good uh, three or four hours minimum. Uh, eight hours is ideal. So uh, and again, put the family back together. We see some dirty, dirty troops starting to come together, and uh, we'll be done with this tutorial pretty soon. So I don't know what else you're going to do with your time. You'll go back to having a real life or something. So there you go. We'll uh, let that dry, and uh, I'll, you'll jump ahead a few seconds, but uh, it'll probably be about five or six hours of my time. See you then. All right, moving on uh, final phase here. We've got the uh, last of the procedures. I did skip a few steps, not because I was impatient, but uh, because they're incredibly dry and boring. So, stuff that I did off camera was uh, various washes. So I completed, uh, uh, finished another brown wash, and you can see that. Finished a flesh wash and finished up with a black wash. So. Uh, it definitely gives the uniform sort of a mottled effect. You can see the uh, straps a little better. Kind of popped out some of the details as far as the uh, folds of the shirt goes. And uh, especially around the leggings. Tried to blacken up the leggings a little bit. Gave some texture to the handle of the shovel. Same thing with the CO. And uh, Added a lot of Grammy detail, especially to his belt and uh, pistol. The leggings there, you can see. All right, last phase before we get to glue the mortar down, which I've almost crushed underneath my feet about four or five times. Uh, today, we're going to be using a few different things here. Got some talus, talus stone. Yay, big letters. So, uh, that's to uh, tidy up the rocks. Got some army painter Highland Tuft, which is pretty awesome. A little pricey for, uh, but it's great for uh, small miniature dioramas. We have uh, Gale Force Nine Hobby Scenics. This is a static arid grass, and I've already pre-mixed some of the stared, the uh, sorry, uh, arid grass with some of the regular uh, grass and uh, done my own little mix here which uh, I'm trying to blend and it, it's just like block grass from Gale Force 9 but if you mix the regular flock grass with the arid grass you come up with something a little closer to the uh, Highland Tuft which is what we're shooting for uh, off camera I have uh, mixed some uh, the coveted white glue with water it's sort of a uh, very flowery looking paper mache kind of substance. Uh, where I'd like to concentrate that on first is obviously the problem spots. It's definitely uh, some of the base that you can see there. We're going to fill in with some of the uh, the tuft grass. So I'm going to put that underneath his feet and up to the rock a little bit. What you really don't want is this stuff to look too artificial and too weirdly placed. So just got to make sure uh, you get all the spots. So I'm going to put it around his uh, around his boot area. I'm going to be real careful not to get into the uh, circle. Try and keep as much out of there as I can. When I do this kind of stuff, I always like to use a pair of tweezers to get as much of the grass on target as I can. And I like to ensure that the grass is going uh, pretty much right where it needs to go. I'm going to do some of the arid grass. I'm going to uh, a little bit. Uh, it does settle in the package. So if you need to, you need to uh, reach under and grab a little. And push it in a little bit. Try not to get any of the glue on the tip of your tweezers. What you can do is you can just kind of knock the miniature around a little bit, knock a little bit of the grass 
Uh, don't be afraid to cover up the boot. It's no big deal. It's like he's stepping in high grass. What we're going to do is just kind of push it in around the rock. Alright, sorry I'm in the way. We're going to take a little tweezer. We're going to put some around the back. Don't worry for now if the grass falls in around the base. The glue is going to keep that stuff in place. Uh, you want to give the glue just a little bit of setup time. Okay, just give it a few seconds to kind of absorb that. When you do this, I don't hate wasting the uh, block grass. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of bounce it upside down. Tap it a few times. And after that's all done, I'll uh, probably give it a little little blow using my uh, exquisite coffee odored breath right now. Anyway, so that was the first spot. Second spot is around the mortar case. You can see there's a little spot right in there that needs a little love. Uh, you can feel free to use whatever you want. I mean. Right now I'm using static grass because that's probably the easiest. But uh, if you have some of the talus stones, you can use that as well. I'm going to go a couple different spots. Up to the mortar case and a little bit here on this flat part. Right there. To try and keep it from looking uh, too pre-staged. I'll look around, see if there's any other spots that might need it. There might be a little spot there, right behind his feet. Again, we'll dig in there. We'll dump a little, a little on that spot there. The nice thing about the glue is if it's watery enough, it will go, uh, kind of settle itself in. It won't get too shiny either. It'll, it'll settle into the cracks a little more. Okay, got a little on the tweezers, not bad. We'll let that settle out. And uh, not too much came off, so nice hit there. All right, let's try it. In. Okay, grass is never consistent color, so I'm going to switch over to a. Uh, the mixed grass. I'm going to add a little bit of that to the uh, CO's base. Even though his base looks pretty filled out, I'm going to put a little behind him, avoiding pretty much anything in or around the base itself. So, kind of some high grass right behind him. Now, a lot of people just dip the yeah, entire base into the flock. What, what that ends up doing is uh, you end up with a uh, potentially a lot of uh, glue flock in the uh, in the container itself. We'll just tap it in. Nice about kind of tapping it in is it allows the static grass to actually stand up and look more grass-like. So there is a little spot, you should never do this, but there's a little spot right next to his foot that needs a little more glue in there and definitely needs some, some more flock. So we'll reach around. Okay. The other thing to look is on the miniature itself to make sure it doesn't look absolutely unnatural. So we see that uh, we see that there's some grass, there's some blank spot behind him. No matter which way you've got him, he kind of he definitely needs a little more filling grass there as well. So we'll pop him out. And we'll start some filling over here. 
Not too much though. It'll make it look completely covered in the natural. So, there we go. Well, again, we'll use the mixed grass since it matches the uh, the base a little better. Try and keep the glue out of that. Some of the uh, I did it in this order because some of the uh, arid grass will fall off too. And since I've already mixed the arid grass with the green flock grass, it doesn't really matter. But I don't want the green mixed grass falling into the arid grass, if you catch my drift. Okay. So there we have it so far. It's starting to look a little better. Right. Now, uh, take a break from the grass for a minute, and I'll take a little bit of talus stone. There we go. This talus stone represents kind of the rounded rock of, like, say, like a riverbed. So, uh, to keep the uh, cork from looking too artificial, what I like to do is, is uh, oops, love it. place a little bit of uh, talus stone around some of the rocks. So, let's. Uh, I got a couple spots here. I've got a couple spots there. The other thing is, uh, a lot of times in World War II, or any era really, the uh, mortar crews would use you'd use rocks to uh, prop up the base plate a little better. It gave it like a extra anti-kick uh, firing, I don't know, basically it, uh, it gave it a little extra positioning so that if it did uh, pop or fall over it was a little more controllable. And we'll save a few talus stones for that. Because you don't want your art you don't want your rocks to be completely artificial looking. So uh, if you want to you can you can add some paint to that. You can add as many rocks as you want to the pile. I might add like one more up here. Maybe a smaller or two. few more rocks to the back side. There we go. Like I said, you can spend as much time as you want doing these. The biggest thing is to make sure it doesn't look obnoxious or uh, kind of out of character. Like the rocks would lay there. Were they really in nature? So there they go. Alright. So there's the uh, rocks as they sit. Watch out, don't drop your commander again. Alright, and now we've got the big wide open spots on the uh, the flat rocks. You know, this is kind of where I'm going to concentrate my uh, army builder static grass. Now the static grass comes off in clumps. And it's uh, basically got like a cellophane uh, tape to it. And uh, that's what you can do you can get out of the package. You can just peel off you can peel off a single piece of it and it has a sticky back. I like to put a little glue on it anyway. And what that does is uh, kind of put it right there. Put it down right in place. And that kind of looks like like high grass growing through the uh, growing through or in, in or around the rock. Just be careful when you pull this off that you're able to uh, get it off in a single shot here. We'll put some more on this other rock. Let's see, just kind of push it down. Don't uh, 
don't worry it's not going to it's not going to glue really quick uh, if you do want to you can add a little more or add some static grass I'm going to add a little probably add a little rock pile next to uh, next to that grass to make it look a little more reasonable more uh, natural as it were as it were There we go. All right. Now uh, you can go overboard a little. Like there is a few spots that I don't really care for. That I'm probably going to add a little more, uh, a little more uh, regular grass too. So anyway, I'm not going to put you through that from a verbal standpoint. So uh, we'll see uh, last portion of this. Then I'll glue the mortar down, and uh, then we'll be done. All right, for those of you who have watched the entire series, this is how they say in Finnish, I guess, El Fini. The uh, final product's going to look like this. Uh, I kind of went crazy gluing some of the, uh, the rocks down, but I think you'll agree it really makes it uh, look like a real outcropping. I did learn an important lesson in that you really need to put the rocks down before you put the uh, army painter tuft down. So uh, make sure you do that beforehand because it really does interfere with the rocks. If you do have problems with the rocks, they just won't stick. You're going to have to switch to uh, super glue. I had the option to paint the rocks. I declined that. I think it kind of pops the way they are. Uh, it adds emphasis and shows kind of a level of terrain. The mortar is held down with cyanacrylate, super glue in other words. And uh, anyway, I also added a little tuft to the front, kind of to break up some of the angles. The other thing you should do if you're going to do a, a base when you're trying to hide the seam, I highly recommend flock grass because it, it does a pretty good job of, of uh, kind of uh, sealing around the hole, as it were. So. I didn't do that on the front because it's kind of hidden by the uh, bush, but on the side you definitely needed to use uh, more grass. I probably could have used more around the front of the uh, the trooper here, but opted not to. So anyway, I'll try and take some uh, decent still pictures, but I think you get the idea. Uh, I have painted brown around the front of the uh, base and tried to cover up the fact that it is kind of wafer construction. But all in all, uh, not many people are going to see, they're not going to see that, so I'm going to leave it as is, probably. So anyway, that is that, as it were. The, uh, of course, I like to knock rocks off. That's another suggestion I could tell you. Don't, uh, don't glue rocks in areas that are going to be subject to incredibly long, large amounts of handling. Other than that, thanks for watching my entire series. I'll have a materials list at the end and uh, see if I can't uh, perform another one of these videos at some point. So good luck on your future endeavors and uh, maybe I'll see you during my very first bolt action game. So this has been Highlander Burial and I'll see you during the next video. Thank you much. Uh, good luck with your hobbies.